Greetings beloved, it's day 10 and the first week of 2020. I bring greetings to you in the most excellent name as we commence this wonderful time of proclaiming the word of God in the most excellent way in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome, I am Malcolm David in the name of Jesus. Broadcasting from Nairobi, it's 9.02 East African time on the 7th of January 2022. Hallelujah. Welcome. We say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord says in the book of First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, that I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you. The night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Beloved, the word of the Lord that is coming to us is for us as we start to have communion and to begin the journey of 150 days of Psalms, day 10. As we talk about a very uh, amazing aspect of our faith, that is prayer, the ministry of prayer. Let's pray for the bread and also pray for the cup. Father, we want to thank you for the bread, we want to thank you for the cup, we want to thank you for this opportunity for us to commence and just come into your presence, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that even as we start this broadcast, that your hand will be upon us and that, Lord, you will lead us in a mighty way. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Let's partake of the bread together. Hallelujah. Let's partake of the cup together in Jesus' name. Welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are a good God. We honor you, our mighty God, for enabling us to gather together again and to honor your name in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 10. Psalm 10. Psalm 10. Psalm 10. This is where the scripture we are at. Psalm 10. We are proclaiming Psalms 10 in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 10 in the name of the Lord. We give him praise, we give him honor, for he is a good God. He answers prayer, and we are here to continue in the journey of 150 days of Psalms as we go through scripture by scripture, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And by the time we are finished with 150 days of Psalms, season 5, we will have covered the entire scripture from season 1 
of Psalms to season 5. We know that using this pattern the Lord gave us, we'll have come across the entire scripture and we'll know that God is good by enabling us to do that and to document it here where you can be able to get it online on the YouTube channel, 150 Days of Psalms. And also you can be able to follow on Malcolm David's uh, Facebook page and also you can be able to see it now here on this fan page 150 days of Psalms cross posting it on the e church Africa and the nations shall be saved beloved it's a joy to be able to come regularly to the word of God and to read and to study and most importantly to talk about prayer because we say about prayer many times we talk about prayer many times we say prayer 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 you hear everywhere let us pray at the beginning of the year, people gather around the nations and they wait for the new year eagerly only to start cursing about the month of January. Yet they were in church praying and saying we are crossing over into the next year. And then moments after that they start saying it is January. So what happened to the prayers that you are making on 31st? Were they true prayers or is it just a ceremony that precedes another ceremony of ending the year? Beloved, I come to bring knowledge to you and I thank God because the Spirit of God is upon me to bring this message, hallelujah, to bring this good news to the nations of the earth. That indeed, as we gather together, we can be able to be edified day in, day out, as the Lord enables us, day in, day out, as the Lord enables us. And this is a good thing as the Lord enables us to do. Well, let me begin by saying prayer that prayer is communication prayer requires two things listening and talking you must be able even the deaf can be able to pray even the blind can be able to pray it is something that god created for us that we can connect with him god loves us when we pray he delights in us when we pray he delights he can see our needs but he is more and is more he's more joyous when he sees us coming to him in prayer. Beloved, Jesus taught us to pray and I'll be sharing more about that. Let me go to Psalm 10 and begin the proclamation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 10 verse 1 says, Why, O Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? Verse 2, In his ignorance, in his arrogance, the wicked man hunts down the weak who are caught in the schemes he devises. He boasts of the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and reviles the Lord. In his pride, the wicked does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. He continues to say in verse 5, His ways, his ways are always prosperous. He is haughty and his laws are far from him. He sneers at all his enemies. He says to himself, nothing will shake me. He says to himself, nothing will shake me. I'll always be happy and never have trouble. His mouth is full of curses and lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. He lies in wait near the villages. From ambush, he murders the innocent, watching in secret for his victims. Psalms 10, verse number 10, it says, uh, verse 9, it says, He lies in wait like a lion in cover. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them off in his net. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says to himself, God has forgotten. He covers his face and never sees. Verse 12, Arise, Lord, lift up your hand, O Lord. Do not forget the helpless. Why does the wicked man revile God? Why does he say to himself, He won't call me to account? But you, O Lord, do see trouble and grief. You consider it and take it in hand. The victim commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Verse 15, break the arm of the wicked and evil man. Call him to account for his wickedness that would not be found out. 
Proverbs, Psalms 10 verse 16. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his hand, from his land. Verse 12, 17. You hear, O Lord, the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry, defending the fatherless and the oppressed in order that the man who is of the earth may terrify no more. Beloved, as we go through season 5 of the book of Psalms again, we are also tagging along other chapters of the Bible. Because we are not only just reading Psalms alone, we are also reading other chapters of the Bible. We want to mention that God averts, pray, God averts evil when we pray. When the psalmist is praying, he says, call to account, break the arm, verse 15, break the arm of the wicked and evil man. Call him to account for the wickedness that will not be found out. We must know that prayer reveals the wisdom of God. We must know that prayer is the primary responsibility of the church and over every child of God. And is called to grow. We are called to grow in our prayers. And we need to talk about the different aspects of prayer. Prayer is a wide subject. We can talk about prayer every single day. But I want to pray that God will help you to understand that in this new year, this being the very first week of 2022, the seventh day of the year, we know that God will perfect all things to give you more grace to pray, more grace to fast, more grace to remain focused on Him. Beloved, I know there's a lot of distractions around. And you can know about those distractions if you just wake up and pick up your mobile phone. It has happened to me until the Lord told me something. He spoke to me audibly. He said, when you wake up in the morning, do not go to your phone and begin to just scroll and see what happened last night, what happened, what happened. Don't be quick with just running there for that. If you are running there to get a word, you go to open your Bible in your phone. You're going to the Bible to open your word, to open a word from him. Then you will be on the right track. But if at all you're going for these other activities of what happened, what happened, what gossip, what, what, you'll find yourself distracted. You can't pray. Prayer is divine instructions. They need traffic. There's traffic of listening and talking, listening and talking. And you must have a reason to kneel. This is why, the why we read here in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 1. For this reason I kneel. And let me tell you, if you're always kneeling because of your personal needs, I want you to know that the very first need of prayer is the need of God. It says in the book of Matthew chapter 6, when the Lord is teaching us how to pray, He taught us by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Those are the needs of our Father. We must meet the needs of our Father. When we come to Him, we are not just running to tell Him, Lord, we need this, we need that, we need... Ah, it's tiring. Can you imagine if your child all the time just keeps coming to tell you things? Oh, mommy, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that, I need this, oh, daddy, I need this. I... You get tired of this child. They say, what is it now? When the child just shows up, what is it now? What is it? What is it now? Because you are used, this child only comes to you for things, asking you for things. But you just look at it when your, your child comes in, your son or your daughter comes in and say, mommy... You're the best mommy in the world. Daddy, I appreciate. Thank you for clearing my school fees. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Daddy. And then he goes and just hugs you. What do you feel as a parent who is on earth? There's going to be a divine feeling and a release of you to do absolutely anything you can for that child. Because the child has come to you with adoration. I'm going to talk about the types of prayer because it's important that the Lord helps us in the few minutes we have. We are soon going to be broadcasting on television and that's why we must have this broadcast being contained in the time we have. 
So you are going to follow through. I know it's not going to be uh, business as usual the way you are used to us, you know, spending a lot of time on this. So you must be alert. Don't scroll other places. You will miss some points. Stay here because we must go on as the Lord helps us. So there are eight aspects of prayer that I want to bring to you. Eight aspects of prayer. And this is also what you can say, eight types of prayer. You can also be able to talk about this as eight types of prayer. Type number one is worship prayer. Worship prayer. Worship prayer. Type number two is thanksgiving prayer. Thanksgiving prayer. Those are two. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. We must go and conclude the six pack plus in the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 31 in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Proverbs 31, the word of the Lord. Here it's what it says. The sayings of King Lemuel, an oracle, his mother taught him. Verse 2. Oh my son, oh son of my womb, oh son of my vows. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer. Lest they drink and forget what the law decrees and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Verse 6. Give beer to those who are perishing, wine to those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Verse number eight. Speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves. For the rights of all who are destitute, speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. At this point, beloved, as we continue to read the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, I want you to internalize, read and internalize the word of God. Let it be written in the tablets of your heart. Let it be written in the timelines of your life. Let it be there. Let it be evident. We are so clear that wine and beer is not for us because we are not perishing. The area of people who supposedly are busy arguing that beer and alcohol is not bad. In fact, it is there. Give beer to those who are perishing. Wine to those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and their memory, misery no more. So the big question you ask yourself, if you are born again believer, are you in anguish? Are you perishing? You cannot be in that category. Again, it says, wine is a mocker, beer is a brawler. Those who are led astray by this are not wise. This is Proverbs 20 verse 1. You, yani, this is not a conversation for a born again believer that whether should they take wine or alcohol, no. It's not a conversation for you. It's for those who are perishing, those who are in anguish. And that's why we need to preach the gospel to them so that they are no longer perishing, so that they are no longer in anguish. The main thing is not stop drinking. The main thing is if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. For an alcoholic, they don't need to be told stop beer because already they are perishing. For an alcoholic, they need to be given the gospel. And listen to me, all you people who are running rehabilitation centers, giving them a... An alcoholic anonymous group talk about your situation, talk about... That will not help them. They give them the gospel. Give them the gospel. And the gospel will set them free in Jesus' name. Proverbs 31 verse 10, it says, A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth more than rubies. A husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and, and, and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still dark. She provides food for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. <laughs> she outworks the mosquitoes. <laughs> There's a night I worked in the night too, or throughout the night I was studying, I was working and you know the mosquitoes were there at that place. So the mosquitoes were busy making a lot of noise. And you know what I said to them? I said today I will outwork you. I will work until you sleep. 
Yes, because there are no mosquitoes during the day. They are there in the night. But there's a time when you work and work in the night until the mosquitoes sleep. This is what this woman does. She says at night a lamp does not go out. She's a busy person. And this also applies to you, beloved men, that this is not only for a woman, it's the scripture, so we can apply these qualities on our lives. Verse 19. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sachets. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Proverbs 31, 28. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also and he praises her. Hmm. Many women do noble things. But you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive. Beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Ah, I proclaim upon you, my sisters, may your work bring you praise at the city gate. I proclaim upon you, my brothers, may you be respected at the city gate. In the name of Jesus, two things are happening at the gate. May you receive respect and honor at the gate. May you receive praise at the gate. In the name of Jesus, may you receive the capacity to pray and to pray the scripture and to be able to understand and to know the things of God over your life. Ecclesiastes 1. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What does a man gain from all his labor which he toils under the sun? Verse 4. Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back where it rises. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea, but the sea is never full. To the place where the streams come from, there they return again. Beloved, did you know that streams which give us water rely on mountains to give them the snow to melt and then the snow to flow into the dam and then you get clean water? It's very, very surprising that when it is raining and very much so, here like in Nairobi, you will find that the water is having a shortage. And you ask yourself, it's raining. Why are we having a water shortage? So I had this water engineer, a friend of mine, and I asked him, how comes there is rain and there is no water in the dam? Then he said to me, the water you drink from your tap does not come from rainwater. It comes from the mountains. The mountains have snow. And the snow, when it is hot, it is melted by the sun and that clean water goes in streams, very nice streams. And this is what is captured in the dam. I, I was like, wow, I didn't know about that. So the Lord allowed me to know that all streams, they flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. The sea is a connecting point of the stream. I want you to understand this. And this also can be attributed to prayer. There is one level of place called the sea, which is very salty water. You can't enjoy the salty water. In fact, the sea cannot, you can just have a, a swimming pool next to the sea. And when you enter the swimming pool in the sea, it is not as salty as that water, even though they are using that water. They have to treat it so that they can use it. And it's not going to be like the sea. Now, all streams in the nations of the earth 
flow into the sea. There are seven seas into the nations. There are different seas. We have the Indian Ocean here. Yeah. We have uh, the Gulf. We have the Pacific. We have the, all these seas, the Red Sea, the Dead Sea, all the seas. And there's something that the sea can teach us. Because the Dead Sea does not have an outlet. Because of that, nothing lives inside the Dead Sea. This can teach you that if at all you are not prayerful for other people, you are always praying for yourself, praying for yourself. You are a Dead Sea. And the streams that flow into you cannot be able to flow again because you are a dead sea. So prayer is also a stream. Hallelujah. That all streams flow into the sea. Then if we look at the sea as a place common for prayer, that all the streams, all our prayers are going to go like streams. And if we are able to pray, then the sea is never full. The same way where we pray, prayers can never be enough. And to the place where the stream comes from, there they return again. The same way water flows into the ocean and then precipitation or the process of heat and the sun captures the water and causes it to go up and becomes dense clouds that flow up and become rain on the, build, on the, on the mountains again. And the cool air is able to become again snow. And now it will wait for water. It will wait for sun for it to melt. I don't know how, how the people in America and the places where we have winter, how you get your water, I don't know. I've just described how we get ours here in Kenya. comes from the mountains. The mountain gets heat, it melts. The water melts down into the dam. The dam pumps it into the houses. Good education right there. Let's go to the verse 8. It says, all things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear is full of hearing. What has been will be again, and what has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new. It was here already long ago. It was here before our time. There is no remembrance of men of old, and even those who are yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow. Ecclesiastes 1.8 I, the teacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. I devoted myself to study and explore by wisdom all that is done under the sun, under heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on men. I have seen all things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, are chasing after the wind. What is lacking cannot be counted. What is twisted cannot be straightened. What is lacking, I don't know, let me uh, read verse 14 again. It says, I have seen all things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, are chasing after the wind. What is twisted cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. I thought to myself, look, I have grown and increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly. But I learned that this too was chasing after the wind. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow. The more the knowledge, the more the grief. Beloved, we continue to talk about the aspects of prayer. I've told you one is the worship prayer. And this is a prayer that you are saying, uh, you know, that is not about singing. It's about God and exalting his name. In the book of Revelation, we see a lot of worship prayer. We see a lot of worship prayer. Thanksgiving prayer. David was full of thanksgiving. So ask God for creativity you know, desiring the presence of God, thanking God, thank Him for this first week of the year. Thank Him that is the first seven days of 2022. Whatever your time zone, even our people in Honolulu that are still on the fifth day, I think, or the sixth day also, they are still back there, still afternoon there in Honolulu. But we shall soon come into the next, the first week of January 2022. 
I mentioned to you that we are busy having crossover cashers everywhere. We are having New Year celebrations of prayer. And even some churches say, ah, we will have prayers until 12.03, 12.05, 12.15. You think God is going to be <laughs> manipulated in your calendar time? No. Those who prayed up to 12 p.m., 12 a.m., those who prayed until 5 a.m., those who prayed even five days continuously, the only way they can please God is by faith. <laughs> yes. So you should not cast January because you started it in church. You went to church and prayed, Lord, we are praying for the new year. What happens that now, after you come from the prayer meeting, you are busy telling your members in church, you know it is January. What do you mean it is January? This is the most blessed month for me. This is the most overflowing month full of blessings because this is the beginning of the calendar year that I have told God is a year of restoration and stability. So I'm not going to look at circumstances. No, 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 no. In fact, I want to do a fast now. Even completely not listening to what social media is saying. I'm sorry, you'll have to <laughs> find me other ways. Because God has a unique way of ministering to his children through prayer. When you thank God in thanksgiving, then you are touching the very heart of God. There's a third prayer aspect, which is repentance prayer repentance prayer repentance prayer it is also very good for intercessors because you identify with the sins and you are able to pray about that the fourth one is dedication prayer dedication prayer it is good to dedicate everything to the lord dedication is setting it apart for god Dedicate your birthday to God. The day you are born, dedicate it to God. In fact, spend that day in fasting. Spend that day looking for God. You know, Proverbs 4 verse 18 says, The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, sharing, you know, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. It's important to dedicate your life to Christ. Dedicate your, your, your marriage, dedicate. it's a dedication prayer. So I've given you four so far. There is worship prayer, then there is uh, thanksgiving prayer, then there is repentance prayer, then there is dedication prayer. There are eight of them. I will give you the other four. Let's go to the book of Exodus. The Lord is so good. He's helping us in season five. We move easily. Hallelujah. And we go fast because we are fasting. And the Lord is helping us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 10. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his officials, so that I may perform these miraculous signs of mine among them, that you may tell your children and your grandchildren how I dealt harshly with the Egyptians, and now I performed my signs among them. And that you may know that I am the Lord. Verse 3. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go so that they may worship me. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? This is a question coming to Pharaoh. Then says, let my people go so that they may worship me. Verse 4, if you refuse to let them go, I will bring locusts into your country tomorrow. Hey, the locusts already had their visa. <laughs> the locusts were ready to fly. They were told, if at all you refuse to let them go, I will bring locusts into your country tomorrow. The locusts were there checking into the airport. Like, aha, we've got a message. Pharaoh is refusing to let the people go. So we are going. We are flying into Egypt tomorrow. Locusts. All the locusts were getting ready. Mm. I love how the Lord works. So verse 5 it says, They will cover the face of the ground so that it cannot be seen. My God. They will devour what little you have left after the hail. 
they will fill your houses. They, you know, including every tree that is growing in your fields, verse 6, they will fill your houses. And those of all your officials and all the Egyptians, something neither your fathers nor your forefathers have ever seen from the day you settled in this land till now. Then Moses turned and left Pharaoh. Hey! Pharaoh's officials said to him, How long will this man be a snare to us? Let the people go so that they may go worship their God. Don't you realize that Egypt is ruined? Then Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. Go worship the Lord your God, he said. But just who will be going? Moses answered. We will go with our young and old, with our sons and daughters, with our flocks and herds, because we are to celebrate a festival to the Lord. Then Pharaoh said, the Lord be with you. If I let you go, along with your women and children, clearly you are bent on evil. No, have only the men go and worship the Lord, since that's what you have been asking for. And Moses and Aaron were driven out of Pharaoh's presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand. Hey, over Egypt. Now notice this thing. In the other plagues, Moses says to Aaron, stretch your staff, stretch your staff over this, and something happens. But in this plague, the Lord said to Moses, notice, he had said to Moses, you shall be like God to Pharaoh, and for Aaron, you shall be like a prophet. Now this time, God himself stretched his hand out over Egypt through Moses. Hallelujah. So he says, say to Moses, stretch out your hand over Egypt. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. If you live in a place with a red district, a place where they have a lot of prostitution and all that, come out, stretch your hand over the street. I'll be telling you that type of prayer. And you'll see what God will do. Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over Egypt. So that the locusts will swarm over the land and devour everything growing in the fields, everything left by the hail. So Moses stretched out his staff over Egypt, and the Lord made an east wind blow across the land all 